Thank you very much for taking your time for us at Columbia University. And we'd like to welcome you. We're students mainly or focusing on international affairs and energy and environment. And that's, of course, why your country and your leadership is very interesting to us. And with that, we'll start with the first question. Well, I would also still like to be a student, but I think my gray hair says I'm not. <laughs> uh, there are many questions which we have, but one of them, let me give perspective. You come from a small country, population-wise, area-wise. You come from an island country. So one of the challenges that you have in all smaller countries is getting your voice out, getting your positions out, getting your thoughts out. And in this regard, you have to work, you have no choice with other countries. So here at the UN, you can talk to other people and you have an agenda, I would hope, and a schedule to get the voice out. So the question is, what are your priorities while you're in New York? Plus, if I may add one question, your country actually has been in the news with ecocide. In other words, bringing a case to the International Criminal Court on environmental degradation. So if you could please address that and let us know why you did it and what are your concerns at the UN. Well, we have to, maybe four issues that we would like to raise yeah. at the UN, uh, General Assembly, Climate Child Justice, an ICJ advisory opinion, the loss and damage fund, sustainable development goals, and climate security nexus. Why we are using uh, regional platforms and we are using also uh, a Volo platform like the uh, UN to make our voice known. We are doing that because uh, uh, climate change is a reality in uh, Vanuatu. We, look, we, we see and we live uh, the, the consequences of uh, severe cyclones and uh, disasters almost every day. If we don't have cyclones, bad weather, for example, this year we didn't have any cyclones. Last year we got uh, uh, three cyclones and two back-to-back was uh, the worst one but this year we don't we didn't have in the beginning of this year but uh, the bad weather continue to affect uh, our islands sea rise it's a reality uh, we have to admit that we are vulnerable and uh, to come up with uh, some uh, policies but uh well not alone will never succeed and we need uh, we are living in the Pacific and we, we share the same uh, uh, impact of uh, climate change with the other Pacific Island countries, but other small island uh, development states as, as well uh, in the other part of the world. So that's why small island said we be during this um, uh, UN meeting, 79, uh, uh, UN General Assembly. We have several uh, meetings within uh, uh, small island states to make uh, our voice known. Uh, but it's a reality, and that's why we we we, we seek uh, climate uh, climate justice and uh, ICJ advisory opinion. I believe it is going to happen on December second. Uh, why we are also addressing uh, loss and damage because uh, the sea rise is also affecting the low line cost coastal of uh, small islands because Vanuatu is made of islands. It's uh, about uh, 83 islands, and uh, many of them are small islands. Uh, uh, used to be beautiful before as uh, many tourists consider as uh, an attraction to come to visit uh, beautiful islands, but uh, we start uh, to lose the beauty of uh, these islands because of the sea rise. And uh, we have to relocate uh, people from where, where we are living in the land. It is also affecting uh, uh, government institutions, schools and health. 
So it's the reason why we are looking for who is going to pay the uh, loss and damage, loss of properties, loss of uh, land as well. Because the sea rise is also affecting food. It's uh, affecting the land and it's affecting uh, the food of the people of uh, Vanuatu as well. So this is a few issues that we want to raise, uh, sustainable development plan, but we're not focus on the need of accelerating uh, actions to achieve uh, uh, sustainable development goals, particularly in the face of multiple uh, global crises that threaten progress. We will stress the importance of international cooperation and financial support to overcome uh, the challenge of uh, poverty, inequality, and uh, but climate change also. Climate security and access will uh, highlight uh, the intersection of climate change, security, particularly in the Pacific, where climate threats uh, uh, affect social and political tension. We will call uh, for integrated uh, strategies and enhance international cooperation to bolster resilience and uh, uh, disaster preparedness. We saw some improvement in the preparedness because our people get used now of the cyclones. And uh, if you compare the past cyclones, uh, we have a lot of casualties and deaths. In the last year's one, we have uh, less casualties. That's when people start to learn and prepare themselves. Even though they don't have uh, strong houses, they, they find ways to uh, hide behind the trees, or even we go into the wells to hide. And but we have less casualties. Uh, but damage are huge, very huge. Uh, cost of the damage also is quite uh, uh, heavy, especially if you, for small island country but have limited resources, the cost is more than the annual budget of a, a small island state like life or not. So as I said, it's a reality we are living. It's because it's not only storms and cyclones, but it is also sitting on the rim of fire. So you can expect uh, earthquake, Tsunamis, and as I said, even though this year we didn't have uh, cyclones or storms, but uh, the weather continued to affect rough seas. Uh, the main uh, uh, transport uh, means between islands is by air or by sea. And when the sea is rough, it's also affecting connection between islands. and. Uh, when it's raining as well, and we have uh, uh, bad weather, of course, we have uh, well, some of our airports are not all weather airports, so it's um, affecting uh, connectivity within islands for the people, but also for the goods. So, is the reason why uh, uh, climate change uh, is a real treat for small countries like uh, Vanuatu. Uh, some are more, more affected. For example, Tuvalu, because it is more smaller than Vanuatu. Let me just ask one follow-up question. What may, uh, I think I already know the answer, but I'd like to hear it from you. You filed a lawsuit in the International Criminal Court. You were the inspiration. Your country was the inspiration. What inspired you to take the initiative? I mean, were, did you see the damage that climate change was doing more vividly? But you took the courage to file the lawsuit, and it does take courage sometimes. We are going through what we call uh, COP, and we will soon arrive. Uh, at COP29, but we don't see actions. We 
we speak a lot. We have a lot of uh, promises, but we don't see enough action. So is the reason why we come up with this initiative. And uh, uh, we're happy that uh, we got uh, support from uh, the other countries, especially small island uh, development states. Uh, I hope that uh, when the court will hear the case, we'll uh, uh, have more answers from those who are causing the climate change. I don't want to blame anyone, but uh, it's a reality of uh, what affecting small islands. We are the victim of what we, we are not contributing to. I'm a lawyer, so I can only support your initiative. Thank you. And with that, we come to the second question. Your country is a role model in the fight against single-use plastic for the world and also a huge advocate for marine health and health of marine systems. Which lessons can countries around the world, independent of size, learn from Vanuatu? Maybe proactive leadership and policy innovation, community-centric approach, global partnership and uh, support, and integrating uh, traditional uh, knowledge. But not the success in reducing plastic pollution stems from uh, its proactive leadership and willingness to implement innovative policies such as banning single-use plastic. This demonstrates that uh, taking decisive early action is crucial for environmental protection. That cannot be successful if everyone is not uh, uh, supporting and uh, implementing because we are living in the same oceans, especially in the, for the Pacific, so everyone has to do it. We come up with this, but uh, all the plastic that have been thrown away in the past is still a challenge. And uh, that's why global partnership is very important. And not just achievement, I've also been supported by a strong international partnership by collaborating with global NGOs, development partners, uh, and other nations have been able to access uh, resources, expertise, and workers' platforms that have amplified its, its environment uh, efforts. I would like to take an, an example by while uh, we, we just launched this uh, initiative in 2018. And before that, we have a lot of uh, plastic flying everywhere. And uh, again, we will uh, need uh, the support from uh, other development partners to clean the rivers, to clean the harbor. We used to have a very crystal harbor before, very blue. But now it's getting a bit gray. It's still blue for someone, but uh, for us, we changed the color. So it's going to take uh, time. It will be costly if we really want to clean up. Uh, I mentioned a community centric approach to engage our local communities in environmental initiatives has been central to Vanuatu's strategy by involving citizens in both development and enforcement policy. Vanuatu has ensured broader base support and sustainable implementation. Vanuatu is living in, in, in communities, probably because we have a, a cultural and custom uh, system in the villages uh, with the chiefs that are leading communities. So it's easier to uh, implement uh, this uh, policy, even to protect some of the reefs, we use local authorities to ban 
uh, diving or fishing in uh, some of the reef zone. This is how the, the system can become effective. But because it's a small community and we almost know each other, and we are living in community and we uh, don't see much difference between who is rich, who is poor, and because uh, we are helping each other. So maybe the structure of uh, uh, one of those community help to implement this uh, policy that uh, we come up with because it's not, but it is, uh, we still have some challenging because we continue to import um, uh, goods uh, and the packaging with uh, plastic is still a risk. The other challenge is how we can uh, treat these uh, plastics. Some countries are uh, uh, treating waste and uh, transform into energy. But uh, with a small country, I don't think it's, uh, the quantity is not enough to start this kind of uh, uh, industry. Uh, that's the one. But uh, we, we need to continue to uh, maintain this policy. But we have been back before, you can see plastic bags flying everywhere on the street. But now you, you're looking less. The challenge is that um, the authority collecting garbage, where you went transporting to the dam side, continue to fly because we don't have adequate uh, uh, material like the dam truck. Uh, so we continue to see plastic flying around, but uh, otherwise we, uh, we saw some improvement. I mentioned about integrating traditional knowledge, as I mentioned earlier, but uh, traditional knowledge and practice into modern environment strategy has been key to one of the success. This approach not only respect uh, control heritage, but also ensure that the solutions are effective and sustainable in local context. Uh, yes, maybe because we have this uh, uh, community structure and cultural approach, it is easier to use it uh, than having policemen. Otherwise, we will invest more money to have a policeman to control uh, each island, and uh, it's going to be very expensive. By using communities and uh, the other organization, women organization, or youth organization, so it seems to be more effective. But uh, uh, the first thing is to uh, realize that uh, uh, plastic bags and uh, we still have some few materials that uh, can affect the environment, but uh, uh, people have to accept that it is a danger. For the marine, we are living on uh, in the sea, and it is important to protect uh, our seas because we are. It is also uh, our garden because it's feeding us. So if fish is poisoning or fish in the rivers are poisoning, our health also is in is at risk. What you what you said is very critical because you're close, you're on the sea or on the land, and unfortunately in our urban societies we get distance. So we don't have the same feeling of community. But one of your challenges also is you have your own community, but you also have the South Pacific community, you have the Malaysian community. Uh, so how do you work with them, and particularly pollution from, uh, let's say, uh, bags uh, is now. But one potential pollution is deep sea mining at that one. So how do you address this with your fellow countries in the South Pacific? Because how do we prevent the problem from becoming a problem? 
It is uh, an issue, but um, we still yet on the discussion between the uh, Pacific Island countries. Uh, some of the countries come up with this idea because when you don't see any actions on, uh, on the climate change uh, to address uh, loss and damage, for example, um, relocation of uh, people and community within the land, it's a real cost. So when you don't have any financial support, we have to come up with uh, some uh, 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 thing like this. Uh, for us, uh, Vanuatu, we are more interested to know as a country because we don't have it yet. Uh, we don't undertake any research under our water to see what is under our water as resources and what would be the risk because we know very well that Vanuatu is one of the countries that uh, is sitting on the rim of fire. We have so many volcanoes and uh, can be a risk but uh, we are more interested to know what we have and our what as a country. Uh, any operation we will have to consider the risk or what kind of technology that uh, uh, can provide more security. So for Vanuatu, this is our stand to, we need to know more what this is under our water. It's not a, a country that uh, have uh, mine resources like our neighbors. They have more mine resources, but uh, country Vanuatu, no. Uh, doesn't have. Let me just ask one follow-up question, if I may. You said you want to know, which I believe in, without knowledge we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's a practical matter. So what are you doing to advance this knowledge and exploration? Are you, uh, are you doing any research? Are you working with universities, think tanks, anything specific? We don't have anyone yet. We don't work with anyone yet. We need uh, firstly to have uh, uh, internal consultations within the country. If everyone agrees, then we can seek for any university or uh, uh, any technology that can uh, support us to do. But after 44 years of independence, then it is time to know what we have in under our water. I totally agree. Yeah. You need to know. You yeah. need to know. Yeah. And then we're already... Data is important. Our population, our students need to know okay. what kind of resources we have in our country. It's just a priority. And with this, we already come to our final question. And with this question, we would like to know what have you, from your path in politics and outside of politics, learned that you think the next generation of aspiring global leaders, change makers should know? Well, I think uh, resilience is uh, the face of uh, in this uh, adversity. It's uh, important uh, to be resilient. Even though we don't have uh, much means and resources, but uh, uh, we need to be more resilient and we show it uh, after the cyclone in 2015 uh, we don't need to wait for the machines but everybody went on the streets to start to clear the road and uh, the building uh, so i think this is the sense of uh, uh, to be resilient more well pacific island uh, country people are uh, always resilient because they know that uh, they are living in small islands and challenges uh, a lot. And the uh, strategic use as well of uh, international platform. So we are using regional but also international uh, platforms 
like the United Nations, to advocate the priorities and influence of uh, the global policies. This uh, demonstrates the power of uh, strategic engagement in multilateral forums and amplifies the voice of the smallest. Uh, we are also voicing for those who are not members of us in the Pacific. Uh, uh, 14 countries are a member of the United Nations. Uh, otherwise, we have uh, territories. American, U.S. territories, French territories, uh, New Zealand territories, but uh, don't do not have voice here. So we have to uh, voice on their behalf. Um, but within the region, we, we accept them to come and bow for the Pacific Island Forum to hear their voice because climate change is affecting all of us. Whether you are an independent country or you are a territory, we are living in the same ocean. So it is good to get the voice of everyone. And few of us that are member of the United Nations, we are also doing on their behalf, but using the other platforms like uh, Small and Island State uh, to voice together, to have uh, their voice together. Uh, I hoping that we can convince the whole uh, countries. Um, it is important also to build uh, and a sustained partnership. Uh, the importance of building a strong and enduring crucial partnership. It is uh, to uh, uh, it is important to have the success of the world at the world stage, highlighting the value of collaboration and to achieving impact, uh, impactful of uh, change. Uh, will not be easy. As uh, uh, some part of the world are more dealing with uh, conflicts, attention is going to uh, where uh, conflict is in Europe, in the Middle East, while uh, we climate change is uh, silent, but uh, it's a real threat that is affecting the small island countries. Maybe by the population, by the size of the countries, are small, but. Uh, we are living in the biggest ocean of uh, the world, the Pacific, Pacific Ocean. So, uh, well, this is what um, we, we are trying to raise. We hope that uh, we can be heard and uh, uh, to see some uh, finance to support uh, our efforts, uh, regional law solidarity is very important, the sustainable law development initiatives. We want to promote also peace and security in our region. So uh, it's a big challenge, but we will continue to voice uh, our consent on behalf of our, our people. Thank you so Thank much you. for taking your time. Thank you.